We made a pledge, we didn't stick to it, and for that I am sorry. This is Batanao Aribdam. I am sorry. At the start of the 2010 election campaign, Ribdam leader and now senior Cameron Poodle Nick Clegg made an inspiring campaign video highlighting the trail of previously broken promises by politicians and claimed that a vote for Nick and his Liberal Democrats would mean a vote for fairness and ensure that pre-election promises were kept. Broken promises. There have been too many in the last few years, too many in the last 30 years. In fact, our nation has been littered with them, a trail of broken promises. You remember them. Fairer taxes, a promise broken. Better schools for everyone, a promise broken. Cleaner politics, a promise broken. I believe it's time to do things differently. I believe it's time for fairness in Britain. I believe it's time for promises to be kept. Well, with Nick and a number of his other Liberal Democrat colleagues having secured themselves high-profile positions and pay rises over the last four years in the coalition government, it's time to find out whether Nick was able to live up to his claim that we can keep our promises. So, in no particular order, here's a look at some of the Liberal Democrats' main 2010 election pledges and how successful Nick and his colleagues have been at keeping them. Number one. We want to see tuition fees removed and we will resist, vote against, campaign against any lifting of that cap on tuition fees. Ah, the big one. At the heart of the Lib Dems' 2010 election campaign was a promise to scrap unfair tuition fees. In fact, they had spent well over a decade canvassing university campuses to help ensure that there was no doubting their stance on this issue. With Nick himself stating in 2009, It's fair, it's right, I don't think young people should be saddled with so much debt before they've even taken the first step in the adult world of work. With every one of the 57 elected Liberal Democrat MPs signing an NUS pledge that they would vote against any future tuition fee increases under any circumstance. We made a pledge, we didn't stick to it, and for that I am sorry. Yep, within months Nick's great plan had disappeared, and a number of Liberal Democrats ditched their pledges in order to secure governmental positions, subsequently voting for tuition fee increases of up to a whopping £9,000 for English students, making them potentially the highest fees in the world. It also meant that millions of current and future English graduates will carry lifelong debts, with your typical English university student enrolled on a three-year course on the new rates with maintenance loans expected to leave university with around £43,000 worth of debt, with this volume of debt described by the Lib Dems as a disaster. Still, Nick's alright, and he even had the balls to claim that these reforms would create a fair and bright future for universities. There's a fair and bright future for our universities. With senior Lib Dem Vince Cable, himself a recipient of a promotion in the coalition, wheeled out to claim that the Liberal Democrats had not broken their pre-election promise. No, we haven't betrayed anybody. No, we didn't make a promise, but it's not an issue of trust. Well, clearly Vince takes his promises as seriously as FIFA take their ethics. And yep, it absolutely is an issue of trust with St Nick himself admitting in leaked papers before the changes were voted through that his credibility would be shot to pieces if he broke his pre-election promise. Although this didn't stop him writing to his fellow Lib Dem MPs before the vote, urging them to tear up their pre-election pledge to oppose fee increases. So, in his own words, Nick's credibility has been completely shot to pieces, and despite 21 Liberal Democrats commendably sticking by their pledge, a number of Lib Dems led by Nick Clegg, abandoned their pledge and voted for higher fees. So famous was this betrayal, that as well as landing Nick a senior government role and pay rise, it also got its own Wikipedia page, where Nick is affectionately described as a liar, and led to a series of protests and riots. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs>
And, along with these riots, this betrayal has led to not only generations of increased student debt, but a dramatic drop in the number of students from disadvantaged backgrounds heading to university. Still, it's not all bad. This decision has led to Lib Dem student support dramatically dropping. And we did get a nice apology from our Nick. I'm sorry. But, despite reports that Nick is planning to campaign on this issue again, this time going for a six grand cap, the Liberal Democrats pledge to scrap unfair tuition fees and vote against any rise in fees is a promise broken. Number two. Fair taxes. Cast your minds back to the 8th of April 2010, just two days after the election was called, and our Nick is exactly where he should be now, an unknown politician campaigning for fairer taxes. In fact, the Lib Dems made fair taxes. Centrepiece of their campaign, proudly unveiling a poster warning against a Tory VAT bombshell and a 20% rise in VAT, which would cost the average family £389. They, they will have to drop a VAT bombshell on every household in this country to make their sums add up. And I think if they're not going to come clean with people, if David Cameron's not going to come clean with people, then, then it's right for us to say, this is what it'll cost you. It'll cost you £389, the average household in this, in, in this country, in VAT, in increased VAT. He's quite the spokesperson. Nick went further issuing a statement claiming he saw no reason to raise VAT, and twice committed to not raising VAT whilst accusing the Tories of wanting to fund a tax break for millionaires with such a rise. We made a pledge, we didn't stick to it, and for that I am sorry. Yep, unfortunately Nick was right. The Tories were planning to drop a VAT bombshell, and, in exchange for a few governmental positions, it was a bombshell that Nick helped drop with VAT increasing to a whopping 20%. This U-turn, which has led to our Nick being accused of betraying the poorest voters to get into power, was, according to Nick himself, unavoidable, given the state of the finances. Except it wasn't. And, in a move that no one saw coming, Nick was found to be telling a lie, with the Institute for Fiscal Studies dismissing his claims as simply untrue. Still, Nick's hated tax cut for millionaires was introduced which, along with a 25% cut in corporation tax, means that of the 13.5 billion raised by this VAT increase, 12.4 billion of it is being used to pay for tax cuts that Nick campaigned against which benefit the few. Meaning once again that Nick's pledge not to increase VAT and to have fair taxes is once again a promise broken. Number three, the so-called mansion tax. Another key part of the fair taxes, the mansion tax, a tax on any property over the value of £2 million has gone mainstream in Britain, largely thanks to the efforts of Vince Cable. And even after the Lib Dems joined with the Conservatives to become the Con Dems, Vince confirmed the Lib Dems' belief in this tax, stating, the mansion tax is right, and the Liberal Democrats will continue to make the case for it. We're going to stick to our guns. We made a pledge. We didn't stick to it. And for that I am sorry. Indeed, as, when offered the opportunity to vote for this tax, the Lib Dems surprisingly U-turned on this issue, with the Labour Party having stolen this policy from Nick and Co, attempting to introduce it into Parliament on the basis that the Lib Dems would support their own policy. But nope, the Lib Dems went and voted against their own policy. Why? Well, the official explanation is that they voted against it to show they support it. Fucking genius. They instead opted to vote for a government motion that, wait for it, expressed their support for the mansion tax. With old Vince, the Lib Dem architect behind the tax, claiming that the amendment allows Liberal Democrats in Parliament to back our long-held policy of the mansion tax, we created it and will continue to champion it. Except, of course, when they actually have the chance to introduce it. Still, this U-turn, combined with some Liberal Democrats' support for the bedroom tax, which is one tax I guess they have no problem voting for, means that the so-called mansion tax is once again a promise broken.
Number four. Let's invest billions in green renewable energy. Ever since the Lib Dems were formed in the late 80s, they've been against nuclear power, largely due to their belief that nuclear power plants are unsafe and incompatible with green politics. And on the evidence to date, they'd be absolutely correct. In fact, their anti-nuclear stance, which was spelt out in some detail in their 2010 manifesto, helped them to develop an image as the most environmentally aware of the main parties, as they opposed a new generation of nuclear plants and pledged instead to invest in green renewable energy. I think you can guess what's coming. We made a pledge, we didn't stick to it, and for that I am sorry. Yep, like the rest of their principles, their commitment against nuclear power stations magically disappeared when the Lib Dems entered government, with Chris Hume, a man who managed to turn one speeding ticket into two jail sentences, proudly unveiling plans for a new nuclear power plant shortly after the election, and pledging not to vote against proposals to build new plants in exchange for a chance to reshape politics. Well, the Lib Dems have certainly done that, and this dramatic U-turn led to accusations that the Lib Dems have zero credibility, were untrustworthy, and were once again breaking their promises. Now, while this itself would be enough to classify and let's invest billions in green renewable energy as a promise broken. If we fast forward a few years to the point that the nuclear power plant deal is officially announced, we discover with hindsight not just how big of a U-turn this issue really was, but also what a clusterfuck the Lib Dems made for the deal itself. After Chris landed himself in the can, he was replaced by the up-and-coming Ed Davey as the Secretary of State for Energy. Big Ed here has himself been completely against nuclear power, having released a strongly worded press statement back in 2006 claiming that nuclear power is unaffordable, unnecessary, and only possible with the support of vast taxpayer subsidies. But when in a position of power, Edward Davey went and pulled a Clegg, instead playing a key role in securing the contract for a new nuclear power plant despite the statement he released in 2006, with the government signing up to a 35-year fixed price deal with the French-run state energy company EDF. The fixed price, which post-2010 Ed described as being a great deal for the British consumer, is set at £92.50 per megawatt per hour, meaning British families will be paying almost double its actual value with any difference between the market rate for electricity from this nuclear plant and the £92.50 Ed agreed to being paid by the British taxpayer, who, as a result of Ed's top draw negotiation skills, will now have to fork out for both the electricity and the taxes required to pay for this subsidy. Now, just quickly doing the sums on that, which evidently is something Ed forgot to do, the plant itself, which once again is something the Liberal Democrats campaigned against, will cost a whopping £16 billion to build while the taxpayer is going to have to fork out £33 billion in subsidies to meet the price that old Ed negotiated. Excellent! With this £33 billion mainly going to EDF, who are owned by the French state. Yep, that's right. The French, with the help of old Ed, have fleeced us, at a time when they're cutting back their own use of nuclear power by a third. What are you doing in England? Mind your own business! <laughs> Still, in an effort to convince the public that this was not a promise broken, Ed wheeled out some top hits, claiming once again that this was an excellent deal for the consumer, despite 2006 Ed Davey claiming the opposite, and the facts proving this not to be the case. <coughs> New Ed also claimed that, for the first time, a nuclear station in this country will not have been built with money from the British taxpayer. This despite 2006 Ed claiming the opposite. And post-2010 Ed also claimed that this deal will increase energy security and resilience from a safe, reliable, homegrown source of electricity. This despite 2006 Ed saying that nuclear power poses huge environmental and safety risks, and the evidence to date pretty much supporting that. But despite being contradicted by himself, Ed was cunning enough to employ the political ostrich defence removing all record of him ever being anti-nuclear from his website, which I'm sure he's hoping will be enough to convince everyone that the Liberal Democrats pledge to invest billions in green renewable energy and his own views on, well, just about everything before he got a pay bump are not further examples of a Lib Dem promise broken. 
Number five. A fair start for all our children. Described by Nick himself as the best thing that the previous government had done, Sure Start centres aim to give children the best possible start in life through the improvement of childcare, early education, health and family support and community development, with the scheme being particularly effective in deprived areas. Realising the popularity of such a scheme, Nick pledged to support Sure Start and claimed that only the Liberal Democrats would protect Sure Start from spending cuts. We made a pledge, we didn't stick to it, and for that I am sorry. Yep, he sure is. Sadly for children everywhere, the Liberal Democrats in government have back cuts to Sure Start, with more than 500 centres having been closed since the election. That's almost three a week. And for those centres lucky enough to avoid the chop, more than half have now abandoned on-site childcare, with a fifth now charging for services that used to be free. However, despite yet another U-turn, Nick and his ministers hit back, claiming that only 25 of these centres had been outright closures, and that other centres had not been closed, but simply reorganised. Then, following in the footsteps of Big Ed, the short start figures, including the amount of centres open, and the amount that had been closed, magically disappeared from the government's website. As part of a data cleansing exercise. Yep, they just up and vanished, with a community spokesperson saying it was done to help ensure that the data presented to the public is as accurate as possible. But, luckily for Nick and the community's department, we've been good enough to track down 400 or so of the Sure Start centres that have been closed since Nick made this promise. means that despite this cunning use of the ostrich technique, the removal of these figures means that not only has Nick once again been lying over the number of closures, but his and the Liberal Democrats pledge to ensure a fair start for all our children and protect your start is once again a promise broken. So there we have it, six dramatic U-turns from the party that bought you broken promises, and while well, shoutouts must go to their support of removing legal aid for the poor, Vince's privatisation of the Royal Mail, and Nick's pledge that There'll be no more dodgy donations to political parties. For the small price of just 22 ministerial jobs and a six-figure salary, the Liberal Democrats, led by Nick, have managed to betray not only their own voters, but destroy the entire reputation of the Liberal Democrats. With U-turns on student loans, VAT, taxes, sure start and nuclear power. And while senior Lib Dems have claimed that these reversals of policies are simply part of a compromise, and that they don't agree with a majority of what the Tories are doing, an idea which Nick himself managed to contradict. We keep doing this, we won't find anything to bloody disagree on in a bloody TV debate. It's worth better knowing that while there are undoubtedly some elected Liberal Democrats trying to do good, the fact that Nick and his senior ministers have abandoned their principles faster than an Italian abandons a sinking ship has helped to ensure that the entire credibility of the Liberal Democrats has been destroyed while millions of their own voters suffer. Still, I suppose on the plus side, having lost their deposits in eight parliamentary by-elections since 2010, been beaten by both Professor Pongu and the Bus Pass Elvis party in local elections, and seen their approval ratings drop into single figures, it's pretty certain that not only will the number of Lib Dem MPs be out of a job come 2015, but this generation of Liberal Democrats will be remembered for their numerous U-turns, broken electoral promises, and ultimate betrayal of ordinary voters. The trail of broken promises can come to an end, 
and a new road can begin. We can say goodbye to broken promises and welcome back to hope.